And once you are there, feel free to maybe cross one ankle in front of the other. So we call this like an easy seat called Sukhasana in Sanskrit, which literally translates to easy seat. And sometimes it's not that easy, right? To sit like in this like crisscross applesauce sort of way. So make it work for you. If you want to bring your feet a little bit further away from where you're sitting on that pillow, you can. You can even consider taking the knees a little bit wider and the ankles don't necessarily have to cross. Like the legs don't have to cross. Maybe one ankle comes in front of the other. And if this is not comfortable at all, let that go. Let your legs go where they want to be. And go ahead and shrug the shoulders up towards your ears. Create a little bit of tension there. And allow the shoulders to draw back and then soften down. Maybe do that one more time. Draw them up, create tension. Notice what it feels like. Draw the shoulders back, maybe squeeze the upper back muscles a little bit and then let them release. So then notice what happens in that release. If you want, you can blink the eyes closed or let the eyelids become heavier. Notice if you're clenching your jaw right away. That's like a place where I tend to hold tension without even noticing. So maybe just take the jaw and move it around a bit. Maybe open and close the mouth a few times. Consider maybe softening the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. And we're not here too, too long, but just start to become a little more present to what's happening in different parts of your body. So maybe where there is a little bit of tension, maybe just become a little more mindful of it. And then take a few rounds of breath, a little bit bigger than before. So a longer inhale, drawing in, expanding a little more. And a longer exhale. And maybe releasing a little bit of that tension. to find that ease on your exhale. Take a few rounds on your own, just observe. Become a little more mindful. I'll often use an analogy of a snow globe when it comes to the practice of meditation or even just the practice of yoga in general. Now we spend so much of our day just adding so many things into our sphere, some of it completely out of our control. And all day long, that sphere is shaken up, right? Because of added stressors or just day-to-day tasks that call on our energy. And 
and sometimes that snow globe is shaken so so much that we like lose sight of what our body needs maybe what our mind actually needs or craves but meditation or yoga is a way to set that sphere or that snow globe down in one spot if even just for a little bit of time So as you start to let things maybe settle and soften around you, sometimes there's a lot in that sphere and it takes a lot of time to settle and soften and that's okay. Sometimes it's easy, right? We sit and it feels good and we almost instantly feel at peace. And neither one is right or wrong or good or bad. But the practice is just setting the snow globe down. So as the things settle and soften around you, you're then left with your breath, this present moment right here. Maybe it is what you physically crave like movement, maybe it's stillness. So take a deep breath in, a long breath out. And take three more slow, mindful breaths. As you slow down, you become quiet and you are able to listen. It's that sound of your breath that you hear. And then on your next breath, see if you can breathe in for the count of three, two, one, slightly hold at the top. And then a big slow exhale, maybe you even open up the mouth to let a slow sigh out for two. One, do that one more time, breathe in, three, two, one, pause at the top. Open up your mouth, let it feel good, full of ease. Three, two, one. Last one, breathe in. Three, two, one. Slow exhale out. Two, one. And take a big normal breath in. And then a long exhale to let it go. And if you'd like to stay in a seat, if this is exactly what your body needs, stay here. If you're ready to move a little more, you can flutter the eyes open, get a little bit more light, but hopefully not as much distraction as before. And you can sweep your arms up overhead as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, drop your right hand down and lean over to the right, like you were reaching, reaching with your left fingertips. Get a little bit longer through the left side. And then you'll come up and then you'll switch. Drop the left hand down, lean over to the left. Reaching with the fingertips like you were reaching for something above your head. And then you'll rise up 
and take the legs out in front of you. Give them a little bit of a break if you haven't yet. Give them a little bit of a shake, roll the ankles, wiggle the toes. Bring back a little bit of blood flow there. And we need to just sit off that pillow so the pillow can come behind you and you can take your right leg long, bring the sole of your left foot in towards your inner thigh if you can, and then sit up nice and tall here, breathe in, think about the top of your head rising and then start to tip over towards that right leg. If you want, you can bring your the back of your right hand right inside of the leg. And then start to maybe find a little bit of a twist of the chest up. So you can look up towards the ceiling. If you want a little more, reach the left hand up. And you'll rise up and then you'll just switch. Sit up nice and tall on the inhale. And then you'll tip over towards that left leg. Just almost lean towards your toes. You can drop that hand down with the palm facing up. And then maybe look up over your shoulder here. Looking up towards the ceiling. If you want a little more, it's that right hand that reaches. One long line here, take one more big breath in. So nice, and then you'll rise all the way up. So facing the front of your mat or the top of your mat, take both legs out, give them again another shake, a roll of the ankles, wiggle of the toes. Take the soles of your feet together, your knees out wide, and you can hold onto your shins or your ankles, take a breath in to sit up nice and tall. And then as you exhale, think about hinging at the hips here. So like your heart or your sternum is reaching beyond your toes. And then you can then just drop your chin maybe towards your chest, look down towards your feet. Stay here, take a breath in. Long breath out. So nice, and then you'll rise up. Start to take your legs out in front of you again, one last time here, and then start to bend your knees, plant your feet. You're like a nice little helper here. <laughs> and if you'd like, you can take your hands behind you. Now your fingertips can point out and your hands can come as wide as they need to be. So sometimes if we take them a little narrow, that can be a lot in the chest, a lot of a stretch. To lessen that, take your hands a little bit wider apart and then start to press down through your feet here and then think about lifting your chest up and then maybe lift your chin. So you can get a little bit of a stretch through the front of the body here. Take one more inhale to your degree, maybe look straight ahead to lessen that stretch in the neck or lessen the strain in the back of the neck. So nice. And then cross your legs here just to meet me in tabletop position. So hands can come underneath your shoulder. Knees can be about hip width distance apart, right underneath your hips, they land. And you can tuck your toes under or keep them untucked. It's your choice. Spread the fingers wide and start to drop the belly down a bit and lift the chest up, maybe lift the chin, finding cow pose on your inhale, we'll start to match movement with breath. And then on your exhale, start to round your upper back and drop your head, maybe chin to your chest. Do that two more times, inhale to find cow. And exhale to round and find cat. That mindful movement, you take it with your breath. Last round. And come back to neutral. Walk your hands up your thighs here. So you'll rise up onto your knees. Your hands can come to your hips for balance. Just step your right foot forward into a lunge. So as you are here, start to take your hips a little bit further forward. 
And then if you'd like, reach your arms up towards the sky. So once you're here, then it's the right hand that grabs the left wrist, almost like a little bracelet here. And then you can tip over to the right. So again, we're finding a little bit more length on the left side, maybe down through the quads, the outer hip a bit, and then come back up. Start to take your hands for a moment down inside your right foot or to a block if you have it, your choice. And then start to again, rock your hips forward, finding lizard pose. So lift your heart, lift your chin like you would in cow pose. And then as you exhale, pull your hips back a bit and then maybe pick your right toes up off the ground. So that right leg doesn't have to be completely straight. We'll call this a half split, right? And keep thinking about lifting your heart forward. I want you to keep the chest broad here if you can. And then rock back forward into a lunge. Do that again, pull your hips back, pick the right toes up. And start to rock back forward. Now turn your back toes, your left toes, over towards the right side of your mat. And you'll rise up to a modified warrior two. So it's with that left knee on the ground, that right knee is bent, arms out like a T. Now reverse your warrior, right hand will reach up towards the sky here. Start to find side angle, but modified, right? So your forearm comes to your right thigh, your left arm can reach up alongside your ear to your degree. And maybe even consider looking up towards that left arm moving up towards the ceiling. Take one more breath in like you were reaching again with your left fingertips. So nice. And then it's back to that modified warrior two. Now stay with me. Your left hand will drop towards the back of your mat and start to press the outer edge of your right foot down. So you have this nice sort of, you're facing the long edge of your mat still. And now reach your right arm alongside your ear. Finding reverse gate pose. Take one more big breath in. Now you'll rise up again, arms out like a T, but your legs stay the same. So your right leg is long, left knee still on the ground. Your right hand can drop down, your left arm reaches up. So lots of side body length, but this also gets into the hips. So finding gate pose, one more big inhale. And then arms back out like a T. You're going to face the back of your mat, find tabletop pose. So we're gonna do that all again, but just facing the back of your mat. Spread your fingers wide, take a breath in, find cow pose on the inhale dropping the belly, lifting the tailbone, and then exhale, round into cat pose. Do that two more times. Breathe in to lift the chest. Breathe out to round the spine. One more. And start to walk your hands up your thighs, rise up onto your knees. This time, hands to your hips, but you'll step the left foot forward. And once you catch your balance here, I want you to press down through your left big toe and reach your hands up overhead. Now this time, it's the left hand that wraps around the right wrist. And then you tip your torso over to the left to create that stretch through the front of the right hip along the right side of the body, the space in between your ribs. Let it get a little longer, a little bigger. Take one more big breath in. Awesome, and then back up to center. Bring both hands down inside your left foot, just for a little lizard pose. You can rock your hips forward a bit and think about lifting the chest like you would in cow pose. And on your exhale, pull your hips back, maybe pick the left toes up just for a stretch in the back of the left leg. Do that one more time, rock forward into lizard. 
pull back into that half split. Rock forward. Now it's your right foot, your back foot, that goes over to the left. And you'll rise up to that modified warrior two. So we're here just on the other side. Yeah, with your left knee bent. So nice. And now reach your left hand up towards the sky. Just for a moment to create a little length. And then your left forearm comes to your left thigh, like you're almost holding a platter with your left hand. Reach your right arm alongside your right ear. So when you're in this modified extended side angle pose. Take one more big breath in. Back to long arms out like a T. So nice. Now you'll face the long edge of your mat and drop the right hand down towards the front of your mat if you can. And that left leg, make it long and press the left foot down onto the ground. Flat if it can make it there. And then you get to reach your left arm forward. Yeah, reverse skate pose, so nice. Take one more big breath in. And you'll rise back up to arms out like a T. So nice and long here. Drop your left hand down, right arm will rise. Find tabletop pose at the top of your mat. So facing the front. So we made it. <laughs> now, if you want to amp up a little bit more here, you can tuck your toes under and flow your knees, your shins parallel to the ground. We're just going to stay here and breathe for three, two, one. So nice. Drop the knees down, take them a little bit wider. Take your big toes towards one another if you can. And then pull your seat back. Take that pillow, slide it underneath your chest, and then drop your forearms down. Find child's pose. But using that pillow maybe as a place to rest your head, your cheek, or your forehead. Maybe you even wrap your forearms underneath it to bring it closer up towards your face. You're not here too long, but just a moment to come back to that stillness. Maybe bringing back that visual of a snow globe. Let everything settle and soften for three, two, Last one. So nice. You can stay here, of course, as long as you need. If you're ready for a little bit more movement, take that pillow off to the side. Meet me in tabletop pose. Maybe a round of cat-cow or lateral movement side to side. Maybe move in a circle a bit in both directions. And this is your opportunity for your one and only down dog. We're not taking down dog a lot. Um, we're not even really taking any standing poses. We're staying close to the ground, staying grounded today. But if you want that down dog pose for a little bit of an inversion here, you can tuck your toes, float your knees, maybe send your hips up and back. Now, I'd love if you keep your knees a bent in down dog because then it becomes more about the length in the low back, less about the length in the back of the leg. So bend the knees, press the ground away. If that's too much, drop your knees back down. If that's too much, child's pose. Lots of options. Take one more full breath in, don't miss it wherever you are. Full breath out. And you can pull forward to plank pose, drop your knees, and then lower all the way onto your belly. 
take one hand on top of the other to create a pillow for your head. And bend your knees. And she'll wipe her the leg side to side. And lower the legs down. And start to take your arms out like a T here. But make sure that your palms are facing down. So you'll start here by then taking your right hand underneath your right shoulder, right? You're just like sliding it under here. And so a nice gentle way to stretch across the shoulder, across the chest, is to start to then roll onto your left side. Okay, now if that feels like too much, come back and then bring your arm a little closer towards your side. So you're almost coming to a 45 rather than a 90. And then you can do the same thing. And it's just a little bit, we don't have to all be all the way onto your side. It's just a little bit of a roll of the weight. And then when you're ready, come back to center. Arms come back out to that T shape. And now it's your left hand that comes under your left shoulder. And you can just roll your weights to your degree over onto your right side. And if you need to, of course, lessen that angle, roll back onto your belly, maybe lessen that angle with the right arm and you will You know, slowly come back to center. Take a moment of pause with both hands underneath the shoulders. Pause here, take a breath in and out. And slowly start to lift your chest here. And find Sphinx pose. So you'll bring your forearms parallel to one another like the number 11 and your elbows will just rest right underneath your shoulders. So you're creating this little like box, right? Of support and a little bit of a back bend here. So look straight ahead. And if you want a little bit of a stretch in the neck, you can drop your chin towards your chest, maybe roll your right ear over to the right. And back through center, left ear over to the left. Back through center, take one more breath in to look forward, maybe tilt your chin up slightly. And then slowly lower back down. Excellent. Start to roll onto your back, just from here. You can. Once you are on to your back, start to hug your right knee in. Now you can keep your left leg long on the ground if that feels good, or if it feels more supportive to bend the knee and plant that left foot, you can of course do that. So I want you to just start to make, with your right hand on your right knee, make little circles with your right knee like you were tracing a circle, almost on the ceiling, right? You can start clockwise and then switch counterclockwise. So you're just moving things around a little bit more in the hip joint in all directions. Start to then send your right foot up towards the sky. Take a roll of the ankle, a fan of the toes, 
and make a figure four cross here. So you'll cross your right ankle right over your thigh here, your left thigh, creating this figure four. Excellent. Now you can of course stay right here. If this is enough of a stretch in the hip, if you want a little bit more, maybe start to take that full reclined pigeon and you'll thread your hands through the legs, maybe grab behind the left leg. Keep the back of your head on the ground or maybe you slide that pillow underneath it. Maybe even close the eyes here, wherever you've landed. Take three big breaths, just like you did when you were in a seat at the top of class. Now keep that structure with the legs, let go of the arms and let the sole of the left foot drop back to your mat. We're gonna take a little bit of a twist here, but the sole of your right foot will drop over to the left. So you just drop that whole structure of your legs over to the left here. And then your arms can come out like a T. Think about maybe sending your right hip a little bit further towards the ground. Maybe look to your right fingertips. Stay here, a big breath in. A slow breath out. And you'll come back to center. Unravel the legs, plant both feet down on the ground, and then maybe just take your knees side to side like windshield wipers. A little bit of a rock of the pelvis. And then you'll hug the left knee in. Take that all on the other side. So the left knee, can you start to trace little circles? In both directions. Maybe start to send that foot up towards the ceiling. Take a roll of the ankle, fan out the toes. And a little bit more love and energy to those spaces that rarely get a stretch. But yet they do so much work for us every day. And find that figure four. So the ankle will cross over the right leg stay here or start to bring that leg closer towards you. So you'll pick that right foot up and bring the right knee towards your chest a bit more. Maybe thread the hands through, grab behind the leg for that reclined pigeon. Again, maybe close the eyes, soften the jaw, Goal is not to create more tension. So be mindful again, take a full breath in and out. Two more like that, in and out. Last one.
And you can release the hands, but keep the structure in the legs. So drop the right foot down and allow the sole of the left foot to just drop over to the right this time. So you tip that structure of the legs over to the right. Arms come long out to your side like a T. Maybe look over to your left hand. Again, a full breath in and out. You'll start to come back through center. This time, maybe hug both knees into your chest, or maybe you take the knees a little bit wider and that feels like more freedom in the hips. And plant your feet hips with distance apart back on the earth. And then arms down along your side. So just one more time, one more pose here, rather. You'll start to lift your hips up. So an active bridge pose. Doesn't have to be your biggest one you've ever taken. Just a little bit of strength in the back of the legs, in the glutes. Pressing the feet down, looking straight up towards the ceiling here. Take one more inhale and slowly bring your low back, your seat, to your mat. You'll toe your feet a little bit wider apart, knock your knees together, and you can bring your hands to your belly for grounding as an anchor. And again, close your eyes, draw inward. If you can return to that three count breath, breathing in for three, two, one. Breathing out for three, two, one. Two more like that. Breathe in three, two. One, and out for three, two, one. Last round on your own. And of course you can stay here for your final rest, your Shavasana. If you'd like to take the legs long or maybe slide a pillow underneath your knees or keep the pillow if you have it underneath your head. Hands can either stay on your belly or let them come down on your side. a clearing round of breath right here. Breathe all the way in. Open up your mouth. Blow, sigh out. Be here for a little bit of time. If that visualization of a snow globe is helpful. Imagine yourself as that still. Structure in the middle as everything settles and softens around you. sense of quieting, a sense of calm.
and take a big breath in. Slow breath out. And start by just gently rocking the head side to side. Find a little movement in the fingers, in the toes. And if they're not already there, you can bend your knees and just plant your feet, stay in that moment of grounding. In your own time, you can roll to the side of your choice. And with little to no effort, just try and bring yourself to a seat, but keep your eyes heavy. In that same sort of seat where we started, and we'll sit up a little taller. Shoulders at ease. Maybe even the mind a little more at ease than when we began. Cultivate moments of solitude. Learn to be comfortable being alone with yourself. The more content you become in moments of solitude, the more joy and love you'll discover in times with others. So cultivate solitude. It will help you cultivate love. Well, if you would like, you can bring your hands together in front of your heart, maybe even bowing your chin towards that space a bit. And in this moment of solitude or moments of solitude where you find that stillness, where you set that snow globe down a bit, if even just for a moment or two, Can you then cultivate that kindness or that love for yourself first? And so you can then share it out in your own way with others. And here, take a breath in. Again, open your mouth, a nice exhale out. And if you'd like, your thumb tips can come meet the forehead. Maybe even lift your chin, lift your face. Namaste. Happy Monday to both of you.